All right, guys, uh, welcome to uh, Automatic Transmission Channel. My name is Hiram, and uh, I will be uh, disassembling this 4L60E for you. This is a late model 4L60E. As you can see, the, 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 the 09 and up bolts uh, that retain the bell housing, the, the bolt is different, and you use a different socket. And this socket is a, uh, a snap-on MTS dash four mts dash four i don't think it's let's uh, see if the camera can pick it up there's too much glare some snap on mts dash four mts dash four now on this bolt right here on a regular 4l60 it's kind of hard to reach and uh, you need a strong impact wrench this this one doesn't sound too strong because i got a muffler on it and or a silencer and uh it sounds kind of quiet but it is very powerful so this video i know i have a few uh 4l60e videos uh on on my channel but this one is a uh late model and i'm going to show you the differences and the things that they eliminated uh on 2009 and up so the first thing we do like always we take the tur turbine uh o-ring or the uh, input shaft o-ring that uh, seals the piston for, on the converter for uh, TCC apply we're gonna take the bell housing off just to get that out of the way and I know there's another transmission back there just don't pay attention to that we'll talk about that one later so we're gonna start with this one and you always want to put force into the the bolt so you hold it and you push and you get it out as you can see the bolt is a uh like a cross sort of like a square cross uh kind of like a wiggly to one side it's a weird it's weird how they made him i don't know why they made it like that but i mean it, it it's made to where you tight it bites but not when it goes uh, on the opposite direction on the left so let's go ahead and take all of them off so only on that one particular bolt you use a little extension and uh, on the rest you put it direct so you can get more torque transferred uh, so you can remove those bolts and as you can see this transmission uh, is being done already and uh, it's on a contractor's vehicle and it's way out of warranty usually uh everybody gives a 12 months 12,000 mile warranty this one has uh almost 30,000 miles on it and he had a two three two three flare or an issue with uh with third gear now oh, there's some fluid in here It looks like it's been leaking from the from the wedge seal. It doesn't have a lot of miles on it. But they did the motor not too long ago or right before the the transmission failed. I'm not sure if they did not fill it up right with fluid, but uh, what I do know is that the, the yoke on the drive shaft he was leaking off the yoke you know how he's got a breather like a bleed hole on it and uh he was leaking out of there so he lost, he lost the fluid through there but i can see that he's wet down here i'm not sure if it's because of the pan gasket it looks like the pan pan gas the pan has been off it has like a paper gasket on it and i'm looking at the pan bolts and they do not they're not too long so the case is not cracked Sometimes if you put too long of a bolt, it hits the, the wall where the, where the seal seals and uh, you corrupt the form on it and they leak. Okay, so let's get this out of the way. You can see that the bell housing is wet right here. It might, it might have been from the pan, but it kind of looks like it's the bottom of the wedge seal. So we're going to have to correct that. Uh, so 100% sure we don't know. The problem is that wedge seal 
but we're gonna we're gonna fix that just in case that is get that out of the way and it's an econoline van so you have it's a two-part dipstick or filler tube get that out too so it was leaking for sure from the yoke as you can see the rear seal looks all right it's not leaking from here but the whole bottom or the the whole bottom of the van uh it was all uh full of fluid you know where it's just sling like a sling sling in the fluid i'm gonna go ahead and take the, the mount off remove the mount and let's go ahead and remove the bell housing We're gonna remove the uh, output speed sensor or the vehicle speed sensor. And this bolt right here uh, is, is shorter it's shorter than the rest of the eight millimeter head bolts. And you don't wanna mix them with the rest of them. If you put a valve body bolt in here, on here, the bolt will bottom out, the sensor will be loose. Or if you use an impact wrench to install it, you're gonna snap the bolt off. You're gonna have a broken bolt in there so what I always do just uh, I mean I know what it looks like you know uh, but just so you will know that this belongs here just put it back on put it back on and uh, you eliminate that issue Let's go ahead and uh, finish removing our extension housing now there is an o-ring here that seals the yoke and the o-ring is nice and soft so maybe it should not it should not be, be leaking from there and as you can see it has the silicone here as well so that leak was that leak was uh, probably uh, see how it's got silicone on it so somebody's trying to try to fix that leak and that's a good thing but it was still leaking so the best thing to do is put a, a replace the yoke and uh, a yoke with the seal on it that does, does not have a or a non-hole yoke a non-hole yoke will have uh, the output shaft does not need, need this anymore and you, you eliminate, you know, the leaks. All right, let's go ahead and take our uh, pump bolts off. We're using a 13 millimeter socket for it. All 4L60E bolts have an O-ring here, as you can see. So uh, O4 and up, o, no, I think it's O5 and up. Uh, they uh, they switched to a wedge, si wedge type pump seal. Let's go ahead and flip this thing over. So it did had a uh, third gear issues, three or four clutches very common in this unit and with that leak with fluid loss oh yeah that's friction material that's all friction material and the magnets it does not feel like metal you don't smell too bad but it is burnt I mean it has an issue Go ahead and keep that upside down over there. All right, let's talk about this right here. So, this unit does not have a 3 2 downshift uh, solenoid anymore. It doesn't have a pressure switch manifold, as you can see. The transmission rain sensor is no longer outside the transmission, but it's in, in inside. So, on this, it's not called a 
a rain sensor anymore. It's the internal mode switch. You still have the pulse width modulated solenoid for torque converter clutch. You still have a pressure control solenoid and shift solenoid A and B. And of course, your uh, lockup solenoid, your on off lockup solenoid right here. All right, let's go ahead and uh, start removing this thing. And it is the same, your eight millimeter bolts, one here, one here and one here. These three bolts are longer and they belong here. Uh, don't put it somewhere else, especially right here. If you put it right here, uh, you're gonna lock your sun shell and you're not gonna have any reverse. Or you will be stuck in reverse because you're holding the, the sun shell stationary. Oh, and by the way, input speed sensor 07 and up uh it's uh when the gen 4 ls motor came out they added a uh, input speed sensor straightforward oops broke off it did have an overheating code as well transmission over temperature condition uh trouble code so uh, we're gonna add an external cooler to it And uh, they pull a trailer with, uh, you know, contractors. They always tell you that they don't, they don't tow a lot. But then you see them going down the road with an overloaded trailer. So it is what it is. Let's remove all the uh, 10 millimeter head bolts with 10 millimeter sockets. And as you can see, once you take the harness to the side, no pressure switch manifold. It's no longer needed, so you don't have the holes going to it. Uh, they elim eliminated some valves on it. Uh, well, let's go ahead and take our 8 millimeter bolts. So always, uh, if you have a contractor vehicle, always offer, well, if you're a transmission guy, always offer your customer a, uh, an external cooler. An external cooler, make sure that the radiator is properly flushed and that you have enough fluid flow. Now on this model, the spacer plate is molded. It has molded gaskets on it. But as you can see on this one, uh, valve body gaskets were installed, which is not a problem, not at all. I mean, the overhaul kit comes with the valve body gasket for this model plate. So as you can see, you have an orange stripe on it or yellow stripe. And the spacer plate is a little different than uh, the earlier models. As you can see right here on the pressure control solenoid area, it has a uh, pr protrusions on the corner. And I mean, the valve body seems to be the same, but the plate is different. So you got to put the proper gasket that goes here. Uh, they added a hole down here. This one has the hole for the uh, pull waste modulated uh, plugged off. And also this hole is plugged off and this hole is plugged off so you have these three holes on the earlier models and on the precision overhaul kits comes with the spacer plate but it tells you to drill those holes if your spacer plate requires them use a drill bit you know to measure it uh, and then from your original plate if you want to run the bonded uh, plate uh, and then just drill those three holes and you drill the second, uh, the third, and the fourth for your uh, vehicle application, you know. Uh, or if you're running a shift kit or whatever or a shift correction package from whoever, you know, Transgo, uh, Superior, b &M or whatever, they tell you what size the holes uh, uh, they want them. So that's up to the uh, performance kit that you are installing. 
and the spacer plate if you're running the new one. The new one that comes on the precision overhaul kit. All right, so let's remove our pressure control solenoid off the valve body. So we probably need to replace this pressure control solenoid. It's always modulating and being a contractor's vehicle, I mean, you want this to be functioning properly. So we're gonna take a new one. Always take this off while uh, while taking it apart because they need to they need to come out anyway. This is a forward accumulator. It is aluminum, and the pin is stuck in there. When I when I well, usually when they stuck and when I go start washing it, it falls off. So we're gonna keep an eye on that. Make sure we don't lose that. All right, two, three accumulator on the original uh, factory. The accumulator goes in first and then the spring. But on some of the correction kits, they tell you to install it this way, which is no big deal. But if you feel more comfortable, you put the piston in first and then the spring like like it comes from factory so it's basically up to you what you get what you guys want to do it works both ways there's no issue there so loss of fluid causes damage as you can see here and of course if you're overloaded pulling 10 15 thousand pounds of uh lumber or whatever you're towing and then you're running low on fluid that's a recipe for disaster so I always take this off so, it may, so that my lower burst piston comes out and then I just put a couple of threads on it so it'll hold it together my uh, parking rod is away from it. I got you a little bit closer and I just noticed that when I was working on the valve body over here, uh, you guys didn't see what, what I was doing. And I pulled it closer. So I don't like to zoom in. I mean, I, my camera is usually farther out and uh, sometimes it's, it's the, the view is too, too far away. Okay, so this is a one, two accumulator. And this one only takes one small spring that's another thing that's different as you can see it only uses the small spring this is a brand this is a new accumulator piston they usually plastic and this is the updated version with the taller legs and the taller thinner pin whoops where are you going so only one spring in there just the inner spring and your computer has to be calibrated for that. You cannot do a uh, double spring setup and just install that spring. It's you're gonna have some funky uh, upshifts on the one two. So that is the one two accumulator piston. Now let's go ahead and uh, try to remove this without damage. It's got glue. It's got glue. What the. Uh, got the yellow 3m glue on it yeah it's got two broken tabs so when you have you have broken tabs and then you try to connect the connector you push in the connector but with these broken tabs there's a little bracket that, that sonic sells that it's a hold down bracket that installed with one valve body bolt and he holds it because the broken tabs is no big deal why are you going to change the whole harness just for one broken tab and there are some uh, hold downs as well from a, a, a tech pack i think it is the brand uh for these connectors 
I know Google Plus doesn't exist anymore, but back then I put some pictures on, on Google Plus about that little deal. I'll probably make a video of it later. Uh, let me get a hammer right quick. So I always put my, my hand right here and then push down because it's going to squirt some fluid. So we take our snap ring off and what I do see how he popped out a little bit he popped out a little bit and then the o-ring holds it down so this cover does not come out I use a 45 uh, pick stretch it stretch the o-ring like this stretch it a little bit more Get your pliers and it comes right out without tearing it. Comes right out. He has a Corvette servo and he has a band adjuster. It's a band adjuster. So this is a good upgrade Corvette servo have a little firm one two up shift but that's that's good because it holds better it also has as you can see here the k0136 it is i think the direction of switch valve from superior it's already installed that's a good upgrade as well let's go ahead and pop the pump out So it is a new input speed sensor. The original input speed sensor has the uh, orange uh, ink on it. It has the uh, Sonex, uh, no, no, not the Sonex. It has the Transgo spring. So it probably has a Transgo 500, 500s uh, boost valve. And let's see if it's metal, it is the 500s. So all this is indicating that the loss of fluid caused the damage. And yep, it has a metal type uh, boost valve. This is a 500 thousandths uh, Transgo boost valve. We're gonna take the pump apart here in a little bit. So here's a pump washer. Our pump washer, we'll put it with our pump over there. Now to unlatch this uh, band, let me get the other screwdriver. Put that thought right quick. You have the band anchor and then you have your uh, fingers on the band and uh, you just undo it undo the band like that so that your drum will slide out you know both drum assemblies you push on the you pull on the shaft and both drums come out just like that the band still looks new for 30,000 miles yeah, that's, that's good. Drum. It's in good shape. In really good shape. Let's see. I, I think I'm, I need to go down a little bit on the camera. Uh, let's see. Uh, about right there. About right there? Yeah, right there is fine. So you have your reverse input. Uh, friction which there was no issue with reverse it had good first and second clutches are new and Borg Warner that's my first choice <clears throat> Borg Warner frictions are my first choice my second choice of frictions is Raybestos and then anything else but those are my first two preferences on friction lining this bearing is coming out in two pieces. It's not pitted or anything.
Oh, we're gonna put a new one in there. There we go. It locked. Oh, it still comes apart. Let's put a new new bearing in it. Alright. So he had a problem on the 3-4. He had a flare and a slip. And it was acting a little weird. It's not completely burned out, but it don't look like it. Let's check it out. Well, they are. One, two, three, four, five, six. I thought it was upgraded to a seven because uh, one of the steels look kind of thin but no it's the it's the, it's the original thickness of steels this pressure plate warps it's a good idea to replace both of them what i do the whole clutch pack both pressure plates steels they all go new so that's that's what i do forward looks a little bit overheated as well let's check that out that snapping out there we go oh, there's, they're new it's just the heat from the as you can see the pressure plate it's just the heat from the three fours getting hot kind of discolored that side of the pressure plate which is no big deal. Input sprag. That's the bearing that goes here. Now I do have a uh, rebuild video on a 4L60E, which uh, if you notice the differences on this unit, it carries over to that other video. So with that other video, you can build this unit or any 4L60E for that matter. 93, 94 was the first year for the E model. 95 was a standalone. Uh, they only did it for one year when they started with the pulse width modulated uh, system. This is a, this is a new, new uh, double cage sprag. This year model has a plastic cage uh, sprag. So it's been upgraded. That's a good thing. So as you can see, this thing was built right. Like I said, it's out of warranty, 26,000 miles, and most everybody gives a, either 12-12 or which is 12 months, 12,000 mile warranty. I'm gonna take this shaft off and I'm gonna inspect it. And what I notice right here, it's got the uh, Superior K070. Uh, you notice right away because it's taller because it takes a spring in there, a spring on the check ball. Okay, so we put this to the side. Let's go ahead and remove everything else. Oh, as you can see, the early 4L60s, it has a uh, slide on sun gear for the front planet. And I don't remember which year, I think it was 97 and up. It, uh, they went to, uh, to the press on sun gear to the Sprague assembly. All right, so let's get some up. I think these are the PRT15 pliers from Snap-on. Mac has them, Matco has them. But I think the Snap-on, they're blue now. They went to a blue point. Taking the uh, output shaft snap ring. Sometimes it's kind of hard to get it out. And sometimes they fly away. They fly away. As you saw, they just pew, flew out. No big deal. That comes in the kit, but I'm still going to look for it. So, uh, 05 and up. No, 04 and up. It's a bearing type uh, front planet. And the uh, front planet uh, bearing, he has a, uh, like a little uh, fluid dam or... You see this fold right here. Once I take the uh, 
the uh, rear planted out, I'll show you the comparison of those two. So let's put that to the side. This is the uh, plastic washer that goes on the center support. And I can see a Borg Warner Sprague on the low reverse. So that's good. So this unit was built tough. If uh, this unit would never had a leak from here and from the yoke, this would have st still be on the road because it seems like Coldy was working and when it get hot, it will start slipping as you saw the three, four frictions. The uh, older models take has four holes here and you can actually use the hardened sun shells that have the four holes for early and it fits perfectly on this there's no nothing differences in the sun shells they're just a little harder and uh, because this is a bearing type unit as you can see that and the early ones have the four tap uh, brass washer the sun shell to the side let's go ahead and uh, remove this uh, center support snap ring and you've seen this uh, modification on the tip of the screwdriver that little hook and that's to grab the snap ring you grab and pull and it comes right out Here we come. Yep, that easy. All right. So with this type of pliers, I mean, these are, mine were severely worn out and Snap-on replaces them for free. And I guess this is their new model with the red handles. You know, my original ones, they, uh, they did not have uh, the right handle on it. Now we're going to get a... What I, what I am doing... Let me get my flashlight. On the anti-clunk spring... No, you can't see it. You cannot see it. I'm going to try and zoom in. I don't like zooming in. It distorts the... Uh, I'm gonna get my pliers in between these two areas right there I'm gonna squeeze it and that's gonna unload the center support and I'm just gonna hit the output shaft To unload it. Rear planted and all comes out. Take the output shaft out. There's an O-ring in here. There you go, it's focusing already. There's an O-ring in this area on the inside where it seals the, uh, the yoke to it. Our low reverse frictions. They still look new. Borg Warner Sprague, you can see on the edge, it has uh, like brass on it. The original style don't have that. It's a little bit more support. Rear planet sun gear. Rear planet, always check, wiggle check your pinions, make sure they have no side load wear on the pinions. This is the bearing for the uh, goes in the back of the rear planet. Always check your uh, bearings for porosity. As a matter of fact, the front planet we're going to talk about these two bearings here right quick. 
So there's no way to get that bearing out. So what you do is you get your sun gear and you push on it. And if, and if the bearing is pitted, you can feel it. This was in good shape. Now on the earlier models, this uh, bearing goes on both positions, on the front planet and on the, uh, on the uh, ring gear. Well, let me zoom out now. Let me zoom out. There we go. Get my flashlight, fell to the floor. So the flat one goes here and the one with the uh, fluid dam goes here. Earlier models, yeah, they have both of them, they're the same. This planet right here, there's a difference here in the edge from the earlier ones. Do I have an early model? Let me see. I think I do. Who they thought? Yep, I got one. All right. So see, this one takes the same uh, as the output shaft. And this one fits perfectly. No issues. Now check this out. The planet that takes the bearing with the hat. You put one of these on there. It'll still work, don't get me wrong, but see how he doesn't, uh, the inner diameter, it's a little different. But actually, uh, it, it doesn't even work here either. It doesn't, it does not capture this bearing on the, uh, on the hub. So, if you have one of these bearings and you try to use that other style, this one, this planet will not go in here. You will destroy that bearing. It feels like it goes in good, but it does not go, it does not fall into the pocket. So pay attention. On the bearing types and on the planets that you're gonna use. Uh, that was a washer type. Uh, let me bring the hub. So here we have a uh, heavy duty uh, beast sun shell. As you can see, you recognize the beast sun shell by this uh, four round holes. See this one, this bearing is this washer's wore out. You can actually use this sun shell in this unit by taking this washer out and that's no big deal because you have a bearing right so that's a washer type washer type uh, hub you can see the difference both hubs and the pocket is different as well. See how the pocket is larger? You can actually use a hub like this with this. It fits perfectly, but you cannot go the other way around. All right guys, well, let's go ahead and take uh, the piston out. This one was here. Let me get this out of this bench. deal with that later all right so low reverse spring compressor is that a better shot might be I need to look at the opening of the snap ring the opening of the snap ring is right here so we need to position this uh, tool like this so we can get to it from the side with our snap ring pliers. I'm gonna flip it the other way around. And right where the uh, center support snap ring goes, that's where we're gonna position it. All right, 
So we have the opening of the snap in right here. Let's go ahead and uh, make sure we're on it. Compress the snap ring. Use the PRT-15s. Let's get the snap ring out. Sometimes you need some, uh, some light. Stuck on one side, but there it is. There we go. Snapping out. Take our tool out. Step to the side. Low reverse uh, return spring. Let's go ahead and uh, flip this case upside down. Get our air. Apply air through this hole right here. And you can see that uh, this is already loose. Otherwise, the piston will get stuck on the parking pole. There you went. Now, on some late models, this is pressed in. And you can see this one don't come out. The band anchor, uh, the band anchor for it. It's pressed in, so don't, no big deal. But on the earlier models, it slides in. Just don't lose it. All right, so everything's out of the barrel of the case. Let's get our pump over here. Pump washer. So we already have this off. It's got new bushings. The drum also has new bushings. These bushings are very important. This bushing, the updated bushing is longer and it has more support. And this bushing right here and the top ceiling ring on the input drum, they seal uh, lubrication for lockup. It goes through here, and then it goes through the inside of the shaft, and the, the O-ring the that goes on the input shaft right here seals the piston. You put fluid in the back of the, in the back of the, in between the front cover of the converter and the piston uh, for release, and you let go of the fluid for lockup application. Pump's in good shape. All right, let me get some needle nose right quick. Get that out. All right. These are the uh, vein expander rings. Can inspect the uh, the veins. There you have some visual vis visual wear there, or where the expander rings work, but you don't. I don't feel anything, so they're in good shape. Go ahead and take them out. Keep them together. It's Thirteen veins. Always inspect your pump slide. I'm not sure how many miles this vehicle has, but if it's black all the way around, it's basically in like new condition. This one, it's getting shiny. That means that it's worn out. We gotta replace the slide on this thing. So we come back to the valve body. 
we no longer have 3-2 downshift solenoid. We no longer have the 3-2 downshift valve. Uh, we don't have the holes for the pressure switch manifold or a pressure switch manifold assembly. The front planet is different as you saw. Uh, com the comparison between the old one and the late model one like this. Internal mode switch is uh, also moved to the inside of the transmission. Uh, everything else assembled the same as a regular 4L60E or a 700R4. The internal guts, you assemble them the same. The pump, the drum, the low reverse, valve body installation, the same as the 4L60, uh, regular uh, older style. The difference is, is that, you know, they made some upgrades, so I guess to save on some material or maybe the engineers figured out that you don't need a 3-2 downshift on these units anymore and uh, less headache, less pain. I know when, when the 3-2 downshift uh, spring breaks, it, it causes a uh, second gear starts. Uh, so there we go, 4L60E two, uh, 2010 or 11 I think it is uh, on a, uh, it's not an Econoline, did I say Econoline? Econoline is Ford. This is a Express, Chevy, Chevy Express uh, contractor's van, and they only pull like 15,000 pounds on that trailer, and they'll argue with that. No, it's only 8,000 or whatever, but I mean, you will see them down the road, overload it. Uh, but it would still would have lived if it wouldn't leak the fluid out. So, I mean, it looks like it was a good build. 30,000 miles on it on the clock or no on the transmission the Chevy Express it probably has I don't know probably close to half a million miles uh, you know that the contractors they never stop they go from here to there and their job site sometimes are 50 or 100 miles away or whatever and pulling all their material but anyways there we go 4L60E late model the differences from the early and the late. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. My name is Hiram from uh, Automatic Transmission Channel, and uh, I will be posting more videos like this. And as you saw, I'm po posting uh, tales from the bench videos, which is uh, normal uh, failures on transmissions. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching.